All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How is everyone this evening? Fine, good evening. Great, absolutely evening. great. Doing Excellent. good. Thank you. Um, give me just one second. Let me get myself completely situated here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our meeting. Uh, staff, um, I can give you just one second. Mr. Kelly, you're going to serve as the um, facilitator on the staff side tonight, is that correct? I believe Director Smith is. She's here with us. I don't see her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Director Smith, how are you? Good, good evening. I'm trying to find myself. <laughs> Okay, listen, I'm like this right here. Like, do I need to put my glasses on? I was like, I don't see her. Okay, no worries. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sean Atkins, Chair of the East Point Planning and Zoning Commission. At this time, I'll call our regularly scheduled September meeting to order. Staff, would you please sound roll call to establish a quorum? Yes, Chairman. Commissioner Mark Fields. Commissioner Fields is going to try um, to dial in, but wasn't quite sure if he was going to be able to. He's in a place where the connection is not so great, but he may be able to join us. And at that point, I will have the record to reflect that. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Lovett. Commissioner Stiles. Present. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Joel Presley. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson. Present. Commissioner Fields. Joseph yeah. Fields. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Chapman. Present. Thank you. Chairman, you have a quorum. Okay, thank you so very much. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, we have two cases before us this evening. One is old business and one is new business. Um, for those who are attending the meeting, I will share with you that we have met the letter of the law as it relates to our public hearing for our old business case with the street address of Zero Dunlap Avenue. Um, what we did last month was we allowed for there to be public comments, and if it is the will of the body, we will do so again this evening. Hopefully, it is an opportunity for us to hear things that are new um, so that we can honor everyone's time. Our first case this evening, as I stated, is old business. It is case 2024, R as in Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001-06. The applicant is Restore Consulting Group, LLC, 
Douglas Suber. Staff, would you please sound this caption for this first case? Yes, Chairman. In reference under old business, item number one, case number 2024RZ-001-06, the applicant, Restore Consulting Group, LLC, Douglas Suber. The property is located at 0 Dunlap Avenue. Applicant seeks to rezone property from R1A, Urban Residential Zoning District, to RT, Residential Townhouse Zoning District, with concurrent variances for maximum height and front and rear setback requirements. Case type is a rezoning with concurrent variances. Okay, very well. Um, commissioners, as I mentioned, we've met the letter of the law. We've had the public hearing for this case. This will be the third month that we're hearing the case. We had pu public comments last month in addition to the public hearing. Is it your will that we also have public comments for the case this evening? If so, I will entertain a motion. I would like to make a motion that we take public comments on this uh, again this evening. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Is there a second? Second. There a... Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Anderson, second by Commissioner Chapman, that we hear public comments on the case this evening. And so at this time, if you are a panelist, that would be the applicant, or if you are in the audience as an attendee and you would like to make a public comment, would you please raise your hand? and then staff will call, um, let me know who the attendees are and I will call on any of the panelists who would like to speak. Okay. We have several hands raised. The first one that I see is Ryan Kelly. Okay, Ryan Kelly, uh, One, just one second. I see a panelist, Okoye, um, Mr. Okoye, I see that you're the applicant for the case under new business. Is it that you are desiring to speak to this case, Zero Dunlap Avenue? No, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Would you please lower your hand? All right. Um, Director Smith, you said Ryan Kelly? Yes, Ryan Kelly. Okay, at this time, I'm going to recognize Ryan Kelly. Uh, Mr. Kelly, you have the floor and we will limit um, to our normal three minutes. Uh, radio check, can you hear me? We can. Look, I'm, I'm very grateful for y'all to give me the That's opportunity. That's your first and last, I'm sorry. For public comments, I'm very sorry for interrupting because I did not say it because it's not a public hearing, but for comments, I will also have all of the speakers to state their first and last names and their current addresses. Uh, no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm Ryan Kelly. I live on uh, 2041 English Lane. Uh, and look, I really appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to speak once again on this. And I bring continue to bring new information to you. Uh, look, if there there's any question of how Mr. Suber will run his operation in the future, I invite you to just look at how he's running his property now. You know, he's claimed to have this property for around two years and on his property are stacks of tires with swarms of Asian tiger mosquitoes blowing downwind to us and garbage everywhere. And if the property is left a mess with the current zoning, then this isn't any evidence enough, uh, you know, to see like, for instance, isn't past behavior a, a known indicator of future behavior? And just ask yourself that for a second. Now, look, there's, there's still no officially sanctioned or state certified envir environmental impact study performed to assess what this development will do to the creek that goes through my backyard. And it's already filling my yard with biohazard products and garbage. Uh, now, when the sewage backs up and flows into the creek, it, it goes downstream to us. And it took nearly a year for me to get the sewage repaired two years ago from the overuse. And all the while, multitudes of our children were splashing around in the sewage all down the creek, and it's a miracle none of them died. And I thank God for saving the children of East Point and College Park from deadly bacterial infections. Now, the, the behavior that's happening already is making Camp Creek unlivable for us downstream. And, uh, and, and that's unfair to us to continue holding the bag while these big money developers come in here and extract all the money out of the community at our expense. And I think we, we can at least agree that there must be some proper environmental impact study performed before y'all can even consider changing these zones in and around Camp Creek. And I'm just going to just ask, please leave these zones unchanged for now because they're there to protect the residents from this type of behavior. And, and look, look, only people that we can beg is you. If you make this decision, 
it's going to be us that get left, you know, to deal with the problems. So you know, please keep us in mind. That's all I have has been so many of these meetings so far. And I'll keep showing up if I have to, but it's starting to wear me out. That's all I've got. Over. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Any other attendees, Director Smith? Yes. The next um, attendee that has their hand raised is Richard Pierce. Okay. Mr. Pierce, please state your first and last name and your current address, and the floor is yours. Okay, my name is Richard Pierce at 2022 English Lane. Um, I wanted, to, hopefully, to get a chance to see any changes Mr. Suber had uh, coming from last week's meeting. Um, he has uh, designated that he's going to put a driveway from West Ferris to his property. Um, I noted that the property crosses Camp Creek and 100 foot of uh, flood zone. Uh, there is a 30-foot drop from West Ferris down into Camp Creek. Uh, it looks like he would need to build a bridge. And all of this I'm bringing up because of the fact that there's a a non-build uh, non buffer zone for the creek that he has on his property. And the creeks that he's going to be crossing with his road are 10 times uh, as large and uh, susceptible to uh, damage from construction. So just bringing the point that the driveway he has planned um, is going to cause an impact on the Camp C Creek and uh, wanted to see if he's uh, taken that into consideration with his new plans. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Any other attendees? Would you lower your hand, please, Mr. Pierce? Yes, the next hand we have appears to be Mayor Bianca motley Broom. Okay. Okay. Mayor Broom, the floor is yours. State your first and last name and your current address. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's Motley Broom. I'm Bianca Motley Broom. I live at 1886 John Calvin Avenue. Uh, just here in regard to this application for the third month in a row. It's great to see everyone and thank you so much. I, I want to thank the commissioners for your careful consideration of this. Uh, I understand that we in College Park have been talking about this for quite a while. Um, and I really do appreciate the care and the consideration that you have taken with this. I think ultimately, this is just a square peg trying to be fit into a round hole. And there are a lot of concerns that we have heard over the course of several months about this project. I appreciate the fact that new development is coming to the Tri-Cities. And I always want to embrace that because a win for East Point is a win for College Park, is a win for Hapeville. Um, we all rise and fall together. But I do think that the this plan just doesn't fit this property. And ultimately, the the residents on English Lane will have a lot of difficulty if this project is completed. And so that's not a Tri-Cities win. That is not a win for our overall community. I really do believe that we are all neighbors. And so just because there are jurisdictional lines does not mean that uh, that the care or the concern stops at the line. And so I would ask all of you to just approach this with the same level of care and consideration that you have done for the last several months. And think of the fact that we are all neighbors and that this would have a seriously disruptive impact on the residents on English Lane and all your neighbors in college. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Before we move to the next speaker, I would like for the record to reflect that we have been joined by Commissioner Lovett. Commissioner Lovett, would you please unmute and just sound here for the record? Here. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. No worries. Glad that you're able to join us. Director Smith, our next speaker, please. Yes, our next speaker with a raised hand is Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, are you here? If you are, please unmute, state your first and last name and your current address. Daniel, are you here? Hi, yes, can you guys hear me? We can. Okay, hello. Hi, yes, I, um, I am Daniel Kawan. I'm a resident 
at 3158 Cloverhurst Drive in East Point. Um, I'm here because I have concerns about uh, the development encroaching on um, certain uh, areas or subsections that are very, very um, near to my property. And I, am, I have concerns about the creek development as well. Okay, Daniel, could you please spell your last name for our stenographer? Of course. Um, that's uh, K as in kangaroo, H as in Harold, A as in apple, W as in walk, A as in apple, N as in needle, D as in dog. Okay, thank you so very much. Okay, Director Smith, our next speaker. Our next speaker is Cameron. Cameron, would you please state your first and last name? You may lower your hand and the floor is yours and give your current address. Hello, this is Cameron Davis Bean at 1980 English Lane. Uh, my property is just sort of across the street from uh, where this uh, development would be at the end of the cul-de-sac on English Lane. Um, I apologize because I joined a little bit late, but I, I don't know if there's any new plans from Mr. Suber, but um, if it was the same as what we saw last month, I just wanted to reiterate my concerns, um, particularly with regard to uh, sewer and the capacity that if if all of these units are going to be tying into the line that uh, runs down English Lane, um, there's it, it's already a system that gets backed up very frequently. Um, the city has to come and uh, unclog the grease and whatever else that gets uh, stuck in these sewers and um, I very am concerned about just the capacity of adding additional units into this system. Um, there's also the issue of flooding where uh, I'm concerned that by developing that area and adding a lot of hard surfaces and non-porous surfaces that the amount of water coming into the cul-de-sac in English Lane is going to create a lot of hardship and negative quality of life because we already have a um, essentially like a, a, a drainage stream that runs under English Lane and there's sort of a choke point. So there's very common flooding here when it rains. So I worry that this property will exacerbate the issue even in spite of uh, some of the efforts that Mr. Suber has described to mitigate that. And as well, just the environmental impact of, you know, essentially having to uh, clear all of the trees on that property. Currently it provides a very nice um, buffer to uh, noise that comes from, you know, the other uh, residences that are there on Vesta Avenue. And so that's uh, certainly a quality of life concern for me and my family as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, Director Smith, the next speaker. The next speaker is Catherine. Catherine, would you state your first and last name and your current address? Oh, sorry, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, -E, Catherine Powell, P-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Um, I live at 2468 Connolly Drive. Um, I'm just concerned about the loss of the nature space. One of the reasons why I bought in this neighborhood is because I really enjoy the nature around here. There's lots of like owls and hawks, and I'm just concerned that this is going to destroy a large swath of native like planting area that a lot of the local wildlife use. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Director Smith, please lower your hand, Catherine. Director Smith, the next speaker, please. Chairman, there are no more hands raised at this time. Okay. Um, Mr. Suber, would you like to speak also during public comment? Absolutely. Uh, good evening, everyone, <clears throat> commissioners. Um, okay, so I have everyone's notes. I'll start with Richard first, uh, Richard Pierce. Um, Richard, I understand that you have concerns regarding um, the uh, creek and the um, the new road that's going to be built, I want you to understand that 
you know, um, but those would be costs that I would have to absorb. Um, and again, uh, the city of East Point has to overlook um, these plans and make sure that it falls in line and in guidelines before um, issuing um, a land disturbance permit. Um, but I but I do understand your concerns. Um, my goal is not to create an environment that is unhealthy um, or um, not safe. So I just wanted to um, address Mr. Pierce regarding that. Uh, Mr. Kelly, ex-military, special needs. Okay, I I do understand um, your concern as well, M Mr. Kelly. Um, again, my goal is not to um, harm um, or to create any unnecessary uh, disturbance. Um, again, I am here to create a beautiful project. My plan is to live there. So, of course, I'm going to, you know, create a property that um, I would be proud of and as well um, be an addition to both neighborhoods, um, College Park, as well as uh, East Point. Um, I'll also address uh, Ms. May uh, Ms. Mayor Motley Broom. Uh, we are neighbors. We're absolutely right. We are neighbors. And, um, I understand your concern. Um, if this is a win, this is a win for both municipalities. Allow me to win. Allow us to win. Um, this can only benefit the community. This can only benefit, uh, College Park. Um, this is a, a, a project that, um, will, um, increase value, but also um, it will not, um, I, I do not plan on investing into a property that's going to take away from either municipality. Let's work together. You hear um, the other individuals that's in your municipality of College Park. Let's work together to see if we can both um, try to mitigate and um, correct some of the issues that's going on in uh, College Park. Um, I'm here. I um, just want you to know I've definitely reached out to you. Um, that's it for Ms. Motley Bloom, Mayor Motley Bloom. Um, Um, as far as uh, Cameron Dean, 1980, English Lane, two kids, 12 weeks, three years old. Got it. Um, I want you to understand, Cameron, that... Uh, there is no ingress or egress that will be um, affected by English Lane. This property is has been pretty much changed and redirected in another direction. Um, as far as sewer and water, um, the tie-ins will be in East Point. I found not only one tie-in, but I found two. There's a tie-in on Dunlop, which is at East Point. Um, tie-in location, um, as well as on West Ferris and the Rose. So just want you to understand that um, this project is a 100% East Point project. Um, and I uh, just wanted to make you feel comfortable knowing that um, the, the ingress and egress will not be on English Lane. Uh, Chairman, that is uh, it for me. And um, okay. All right. I'm Thank clear. You so All right. Thank you so very much. Um, at this time, I'll ask staff if there would be a motion to close the public comment period. I mean, not staff, commissioners, if there is a motion to close the public comment period. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Miller? 
I make a motion that we close the public comment period for this. Is there Very a second? second? It's, been, it's been moved by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Presley. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Been moved by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Presley, that we close the public comment period for case number 2024, R as in Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001 dash 06. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All, aye. all opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public comment is now closed. Um, uh, Ms. Powell, would you please lower your hand? Staff, would you please sound your recommendation for this agenda item? Are they speaking? No, I think she's looking for something. Okay. Chairman, in reference to case number 2024 RZ-001-06, property located 0 Dunlap Avenue, staff recommends approval of the rezoning for property from R1A Urban Residential to RT Residential Townhouse District as a proposal is in compliance with the City of East Point's comprehensive plan with the following conditions. Condition number one, applicant must submit a homeowner association covenant Number two, applicant may only build at maximum the proposed 11 townhomes. Condition number three, to, uh, the applicant shall ensure the building elevations vary in style and design composed as depicted in the work session presentation on August 8th, 2024. Mm -hmm. Condition number five, townhomes must have 35 to 40% transparency. Condition number five, provide staggering patterns of townhomes and ensure corner units are brick. Condition number six, City of East Point Planning and Community Development Department will maintain architectural oversight of the development. Condition number seven, the applicant must provide the following proposed, amenity, uh, proposed amenities. A masonry wall surrounding the perimeter of the property, enhanced landscaping, benches, architectural lighting, fire pits, bike racks, underground water, stormwater detention facility, walking trail, playground, and a dog park. Condition number eight, prior to approval of preliminary plat, the applicant shall follow the administrative procedures pursuant to section 4-2007 administrative procedures for abandonment of city-owned right-of-way, uh, ways, lanes, and alleys. Condition number nine, the applicant shall consider and provide an alternative egress ingress for proposed development that allows access into development from a city of East Point Road. Director Smith, there were there was some more copy under yes, the there finding. there is, and for some reason it's it's cutting off. So I just want to make sure that I have it in its totality. Uh, furthermore, due to the steep to topography and lot restriction, staff further recommends approval of the concurrent variances to reduce the minimum lot width from thirty feet to twenty five feet the front and rear setbacks from 10 feet to five feet, and to increase the maximum height of the 35, up uh, from 35 feet to 40 feet. Okay. And that is um, the end of our recommendation. Okay, can you post those conditions um, for everyone to see, please? Yes. All right. Okay. And then we're able to see those. So, okay. There we are. 
All right, commissioners, we've heard from the public during our public comment period. We've heard staff's recommendation. At this time, I will entertain a motion for case number 2024, R as in Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001, dash 06. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Miller. I make a motion that we accept staff's recommendations with the conditions that are presented. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Chair. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Presley. That this body um, recommends approval with the conditions as stated by staff for case number 2024, R as in Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001, dash 06, for street address 0 Dunlap Avenue. Any comments, questions, or concerns? If you would raise your hand. Uh, let's see here. I think I see Commissioner Joseph Fields. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, in light of um, the concerns of the English Channel residents, also in light of the fact that one of the main problems that they seem to be indicating is is the flooding condition. I understand they're going to um, that the applicant is going to do a um, stormwater management type of um, a, a, a place to for the water to run off, and that so my concern is that 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 retention the stormwater retention. Thing needs to be managed, and, and there is a section in the um, in the ordinance um, ten that's uh, one ten twenty one to twenty three, which gives um, guidelines um, for managing a stormwater facility. And I just wanted to make sure that within this particular authorization, that there'll be further stormwater management procedures put in place so that um, they can make sure that the water will be controlled as, to, as far as runoff is concerned. So that's my consideration. That's my concern. And I'd like to add a condition that uh, the structural stormwater control management be implemented as well. Okay, state that once more, Com um, Commissioner Fields, the structural Structural stormwater control management. That's the concept that's within the uh, ordinances that calls for managing stormwater runoffs. Okay, so um, we've got it in condition number seven. So let me see if I can integrate these words into that condition. And then you would either have to offer a substitute motion or a friendly amendment to the motion, but we'll get to that after um, I see if I can add this. So structural stormwater management so number seven reads, must provide the following proposed amenities and masonry walls surrounding the perimeter of the property. Um, while I read this, Director Smith, are you able to make edits real time or Assistant Director Kelly, are you able to do that? I am. Okay, so um, now you made it smaller and my eyesight is, you, you wanna test my eyesight, that's what you're doing, okay? Um, not intentionally. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Must provide the following proposed amenities. A masonry wall surrounding <clears throat> perimeter of the property, comma, enhanced landscaping, comma, benches, comma, architectural lighting, comma, fire pits, comma, bike racks, comma, underground stormwater detention facility in accordance was section 10, 1, 10, 22. It's called stormwater management plan in accordance with 10 11023. Okay, hold on one second. Commissioner Fields, I want to make sure we get all those numbers. So that's section 10 11022. Uh, encompassing 101023. which calls for inspection and maintenance agreements in accordance um, with 11024. Okay. Let's, um, Commissioner Fields, if you would just give me just one second. 
Um, Director Smith, while you're doing that, um, Assistant Director Kelly, will you be able to pull up that section real quickly? Um, Commissioner Fields? Yes. Will you be okay if we reference the section number here? Because then it will include all of the necessary language. And exactly. so I'm asking, okay, I'm asking <clears throat> Assistant Director Kelly to pull that so that we can get the section. And I believe that you were also stating a subsection, but it may be that the section will cover everything. That's what I'm trying to see, okay? Okay. All right. Just give us one second. And I see that you also have your hand raised, Assistant Director Kelly. So if you would like to say something while you're looking for that. You're on mute. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I was trying to do one thing at a time. No, the okay. only thing I was gonna comment on was the fact that most of the concerns that everyone has brought up tonight uh, really, in addition to Commissioner Phil's request, all of those items are, are really a part of the land disturbance permitting process. Right. So although we may add it as a condition, those are still procedures that have to take place when the LDP, the land disturbance permit, is being reviewed and, and approved by staff. So I mean, there's no there's no harm in art adding it as a condition, but those are things that the city will have to review as well. In addition to the street that I believe Mr. <clears throat> Pierce brought up with conditions about flooding and things of those natures, none of that is looked at as early as the zoning stage. Those items are looked upon and they have there are measures that have to be met during that process. So, you know, the applicant is his engineer basically have to make sure that they can address all those matters at that time for the most part. That was the only thing I wanted to add, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes, thank you for adding Thanks. those things. And you're correct on those. Um, and to just make sure, like you said, there's no harm. I know that it's already a part of the normal procedure. And um, so we will go ahead and add it here. Um, in the conditions, um, since uh, it is a concern of Commissioner Fields, and we'll see if Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Presley will accept that as a friendly amendment to their motion. But it'll just be um, double protection, I guess, if you will. Okay. Um, if you could just give us that section number and just make sure that we've incorporated um, the concern being addressed with section number 10-11022, if that will suffice, and if that language is within that section to be referenced. Mr. Chair, we, it starts at 11021. Okay. Through so, 11023. So those are the, those are the, line, that's the language of the uh, gotcha. storm control management section. Okay. And I just so, mentioned, Oh, excuse me, just one second. I just mentioned it because there are a lot of concerns, you know, with the community over there on English Channel. And I personally visited that area and saw, you know, how close and how small it is, you know, and how, you know, big construction things on that in that area would impact them in a negative way. So I saw that. And so my concern is with their concerns. And so I want them to be um, alleviated, you know, in their spirit to know that, you know, if the when the project goes through, that it's going to be done properly and correctly with their concerns in mind. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Fields. So, Commissioner Fields, I'm going to now read the edited condition number seven. It now says that must provide the following proposed amenities a masonry wall surrounding the perimeter of the property, enhanced landscaping, benches, architectural lighting, fire pits, bike racks, underground stormwater detention facility, control management in accordance with section 10-11021 through section 10-11023, walking trail, playground, and a dog park. That's satisfactory. That meets your satisfaction, okay? Commissioner Miller, will you accept that as a friendly amendment to your motion? 
Commissioner, you're on mute, Commissioner Miller. Sorry about that. The dog was barking. Yes, I will accept that as a the friendly uh, amendment. And Commissioner Presley, does your second still stand? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it does as a friendly amendment. Okay. Motion. Thank you. Commissioner Fields, you still have your hand raised. Do you have another point to bring up? Oh, that's it. Thank you. I'll You're welcome. That. Okay. Any other comments, questions, or concerns regarding this case? Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Okay. Uh, Director Kelly, you have your hand raised. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, there has been a motion made by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Presley, amended by Commissioner Joseph Fields, still approved by Commissioner Miller, the maker of the motion, and Commissioner Presley, the second of the motion that this body recommends approval of case number 2024, R as in Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001, dash 06, with the conditions as stated by staff. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We will now move to our second case. It's our first case under new business. It is 2024, the as in Victor, dash 001, dash 08. Street address is 3113 Washington Road. Staff, would you please sound the caption? Chairman, in reference to item number uh, two under new business, case number 2024V-001-08, applicant Little Dollar Incorporated, SC EFC Daniel Okoye, property located at 3113 Washington Road. Applicant seeks a variance from section 10-2072-6A, Child Care Learning Center, Facilities shall locate no closer than a thousand feet to another child care learning center. Case type is a variance. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this case does require a public hearing. At this time, I will read our rules for public hearings. Public hearings before the Planning and Zoning Commission shall be conducted in accordance with section 10-2219 of the East Point Zoning Code and the Development Regulations. During this virtual meeting, we are utilizing the telemarketing platform to act upon planning and zoning cases as they come before this commission. As such, I am asking each participant other than, other than commissioners and staff to mute their devices. Once we get to parts of the agenda that require public input, those who have notified staff of their desire to speak will be recognized to speak. If you did not notify staff but desire to speak, please use the raise hand or chat function to be recognized. Public hearing rules are as follows. Persons both favoring and opposing the proposed case will be provided an opportunity to address the commission. The applicant for the zoning case or the applicant's designated representative, if any, will be entitled to speak first, followed by other speakers in favor of the proposal for a total of 15 minutes. Those who oppose the proposed zoning case will then be permitted to speak for a total of 15 minutes. By majority vote, the commission may increase the total time of speakers provided that each side is given the same amount of time. If there is more than one speaker per side, the chair or the presiding officer may limit the time allotted to each individual speaker other than the zoning applicant. The zoning applicant may reserve a portion of his or her allotted time for rebuttal. Speakers must adhere to the rules of decorum. Prior to speaking, each speaker shall identify him or herself, state his or her current address, speak only to the merits of the proposed zoning ordinance under consideration, shall address remarks only to the commission and shall refrain from making personal attacks on any other speaker. The presiding officer may refuse a speaker the right to continue if after first being cautioned, the speaker continues to violate the rules of the quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard our rules for public hearings. Commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing. I move we open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Anderson, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that we open the public hearing. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All, all opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now open. 
Our applicant for this evening is Mr. Okoye. <clears throat> Yes. Okay, Mr. Koye, um, if you would please state your first and last name and uh, your current address, and also do you need screen sharing capabilities? Um, my first and last name is Ifesio Koye. No, I don't need screen sharing capabilities because I wanted to uh, request a deferment for 30 days till next month. Okay, all right. Um, thank you. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning case? Any other proponents here to speak in favor? Chairman, there are no hands raised in the attendees. Okay. All right, any opponents? Any opponents here to speak against? Any opponents here to speak against? Chairman, there are no hands raised in our attendees. Okay, thank you so very much. Commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move we close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved by Commissioner Anderson, seconded by Commissioner Presley that we close the public hearing for case number 2024, V as in Victor-001-08. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation for case number 2024B as in Victor-001-08. Chairman, in reference to the property address located at 3113 Washington Road, uh, case number P2024RZ-001-07, a staff recommends and supports the applicant's request for a deferral to the October 17th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, we've heard from staff. And we've also heard from the applicant. The applicant has requested a deferral to our regularly scheduled October meeting. Staff supports that um, request as well. So at this time, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Miller. I make a motion that we accept staff's recommendation for deferral until the October 17th. So I may have so. Okay. I second. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Presley. Is that correct? I think it was both <laughs> myself and Commissioner Anderson, either or. Okay, moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Anderson, that we defer this case to our regularly scheduled October meeting. Any comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the eyes have it. Mr. Okoye, the body has um, moved, the body has acted to defer your case to our regularly scheduled October meeting. Um, that it also means that you will have an opportunity to come back before us during the work session. And so I will encourage you to do that because that's an opportunity where a lot of the areas are worked out if there are challenges or questions. So um, don't just wait till the meeting please also utilize the work session. I am generally not a proponent for doing committee work during a commission meeting. That is why we have the work session and I like to be respectful of everyone's time. So please take advantage of the work session prior to the regularly scheduled October meeting, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, um, staff, it seems that there are two items under announcements. Would you like to talk about those two things? Yes, I um, just quickly just wanted to state that um, today was the second of four of the series of the Planning Commission um, series at the Atlanta Regional Commission. And if anyone that attended would like to speak on it, they can. I know that um, Mr. Kelly and Ms. Gatewood from our team um, were participants today. So just wanted to, to share that. And then the second item um, is... We have um, seven cases that's coming to our October uh, Planning Commission meeting. And I just want you all to be aware of that. We're gonna go ahead and send the applications out to you all so you can get familiar with the cases. Um, due to the staffing issue that we've been having for the last couple of months, um, a lot of the cases got backed up. And so we have to find a way to move them forward. And you know we're working through them and mulling through them, but we just wanted you to be aware that at our October meeting, we have seven cases. Um, I, I can't remember in the recent history where we've had this many. So 
um, we're going to try to uh, streamline it and, you know, make it go as smooth as possible. And we just want to make you aware. And it looks like it's four variances, um, two use permits, and two rezoning cases. Okay. I just want to make you aware. Uh, right, and you'll be you. getting the, the applications <laughs> soon. Yes, it has been quite a while since we've had so many cases. Um, I believe there was a staffing issue before before we had sort of a month like this, there were a lot of cases. Um, and I think that there was a time when we had some adjustments to text and yes. we had to break those up over a couple of months because there were so many cases. 16, yes. 16, yes. I remember there was, it was a large number of cases. Yes. Staff, I am going to ask this of you, please. Would you please reach out to each of these applicants, prepare written notification, for them to be prepared. And being prepared would mean any presentation that they would have, that they would want to use um, in this process for work session, as well as our commission meeting, um, that will help this out tremendously. Um, and you can give them examples of what some of the other um, applicants have done, I imagine, but I just would not want them to come before the body and say, oh, I didn't know that I could do that or needed that. So hopefully if they come prepared, we would be able to move through these as expeditiously as possible. You are thinking what we're thinking. And I will say out of all seven of them, we just had CZIM on Tuesday, All uh, six out of the seven had very good uh, pre presentations for us. So you're gonna be impressed. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right, um, so very well. Um, if there is nothing else good for the body, I have no announcements. Commissioners, do you have any announcements that's good for the body? Okay. Hearing none and seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Joseph Field, second by Commissioner Anderson that we adjourn our regularly scheduled September meeting. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound aye. nay. Hearing none, the eyes have it. This meeting is adjourned. Commissioners, thank you so very much for your time and your service. Good night. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.